In part one of this series, we explain what UTMB is all about. In part two, we're going to focus on the kit and equipment that you'll need in order to compete in the main races. Let's start by talking about trail shoes. This year, Hoka have two main trail shoes that will feature heavily at UTMB, the Tecton X and the Mafati Speed 4. First up is the Tecton X, named after the Earth's tectonic plates, which inspired its revolutionary parallel carbon fiber plate technology. This shoe is built for speed. With a Profly X midsole, bolstered by a Vibram Mega Grip light base outsole, it's Hoka's first trail shoe to incorporate propulsive, dual parallel carbon fiber plates. It's also designed to perform differently to other trail shoes featuring carbon plates in the midsole. And this is because the forks allow more movement and flexibility, which allows you to work with and not against the terrain. They're the perfect trail racing shoe because they're well suited to the terrain and they're super light and super fast. Expect to see these on the feet of many Hoker athletes in this year's edition of the UTMB. Next up is the Mafati Speed 4, a pinnacle product for technical trail. This shoe includes everything we've already seen in the Evo Mafati and the Mafati Speed, but it's been updated with new textiles and construction, including a breathable single layer jacquard mesh and a two part profile midsole with the lightest, most responsive hoker foam underfoot. In comparison to the Tecton X, it's slightly heavier, but it does offer more protection and stability in the upper and extra grip on the outsole with deeper five millimeter lugs. This shoe would be a better choice in poorer weather conditions or for somebody who wants a more supportive and aggressive trail shoe. Aside from the shoes, what kit will you need? Well, the most important thing to carry is a race pack, also known as a race vest or a lightweight running backpack. What size pack do you need? Well, we asked a number of experienced Hoka runners, all suggested a minimum of 12 litres, which is large enough to store all of your kit. Ultimately, you need to find a balance between weight and performance whilst carrying everything you need. In addition to this, you'll also need a mobile phone with live run application installed and activated. An external battery is also highly recommended just in case it runs out of charge. You also need to carry a small personal beaker or cup to fill up drinks. Bottles or flasks with lids are not accepted. You'll need minimum water supply of at least one litre. You'll need two working head torches with spare batteries for each torch and your main torch will need a power outlet of 200 lumens or more. You'll need a survival blanket, a whistle, a first aid kit with self-adhering elastic bandage for bandaging or strapping. And although you'll eat plenty of food in the aid stations, you'll need to carry food in your pack with a recommendation of at least 800 kilocalories. For example, two gels and two energy bars. A waterproof jacket with a hood for the bad weather is essential. This jacket must be made of a waterproof and breathable membrane and have a minimum 10,000 HH rating. That's hydrostatic head and is a term for a measurement in waterproofs. Most importantly, good quality waterproof jackets will always have taped seams. This is something to look out for. So make sure that you check before you buy. This is to stop any water entering at the weaker points in the jacket. As well as the waterproof jacket, you'll also need long-legged trousers or race leggings to cover your legs completely. Any waterproof pants will also need to have taped seams. You'll need an additional warm second layer, a warm long sleeve jacket that's not cotton and a windproof jacket with durable DWR protection. The windproof jacket does not replace the mandatory waterproof jacket and vice versa. You'll need a hat. You'll need warm waterproof gloves. You'll need an ID or passport card. And in case of hot weather, you may be required to carry additional kit. You'll need some sunglasses with a high UV protection. Also that wrap around at the sides. A Saharan cap or any combination which completely covers the head and the nape of the neck. It can get very hot even in the mountains. You'll need sunscreen with a minimum recommendation of SPF 50. 
A minimum water supply of two litres as opposed to just one litre in normal weather circumstances. And in light of cold weather kit, you may be required to carry even more extra kit just to cope and tackle the conditions. Protective eyewear, and it is possible to use the same glasses if they are suitable for both the sun and bad weather, such as glasses with photochromatic lenses. You'll need a third warm layer to sit between the second layer and your waterproof jacket. The recommendation is a fleece or a compressible down jacket. You'll need sturdy or close toe trail running shoes, minimalist or ultralight shoes excluded. All clothing items must fit the runner in terms of size and they must not be altered in any way after purchasing. The mandatory gear must be carried in a running pack for the duration of the whole race. Other recommended equipment includes spare warm clothing, essential in case of any cold and rainy weather and in case of an injury. You'll need some running poles in case of rain or snow for your safety on slippery ground. This is also a common piece of equipment for all ultra runners to carry to help them navigate the tough climbs and the steep descents. We will talk more about running poles in future editions of this series. You'll need Vaseline or anti-heat cream and you'll need at least 20 euros in cash, just in case. A reusable bowl, GPS smartwatch, ideally with long lasting battery life and an extra charger. This is often used to help with navigation also. You'll need a knife or scissors for cutting elastic bandages. You'll need emergency sewing kits and that's just the basic list. Some runners also prefer to carry extra additional items just in case. So stay tuned guys for more UTMB and Hoka related content as we look to guide you through this year's event. And remember, if you enjoyed listening to this content or you found it really helpful, then please sign up for our YouTube channel now, sportshoes.com. Okay.